Hi guys, I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, what I'm gonna talk about is no contact with a narcissist, um, how to do it, why you do it, and what to expect. So first of all, the first thing to note about no contact with a narcissist is you are not doing this to punish the narcissist. You are not doing it for them. You are doing this for you so you can start to heal. In order for you to really start to heal, no contact is vital. So if you're, I mean, it's just so important like to just go no contact and um, you're not trying to punish them. You're not trying to manipulate them. You are trying to save yourself. So this is going to be one of your first steps towards true healing. Um, you know, when you're going no contact, obviously do not, um, go against like the court system. Um, if you need to have contact, you may need to use a third party, an attorney, a mediator, a friend of the family or some, something like that. So don't, you know, I'm not suggesting that you don't respond to court orders or something like that, but we're talking about emotional and, you know, um, physical, like no contact. You need to block them on everything. Refuse them entry into your home. Do not talk to them on the phone, text, email, block them, block their email, block their phone number, everything. You can tell them once, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Don't keep saying it just once and then do not respond at all. You are dead to them. Um, you do not talk to the third parties, the flying monkeys that may try to contact you. Some of these people may have no idea what they're dealing with. They may even be your friends. They may be reaching out to you and saying, hey, this person wanted to get a hold of you. You say to them, I'm not interested. I don't want to hear anything about this person. If some of your friends want to talk to you about what's going on in their life, say, I don't want to hear anything about what is happening to that person. Do not look at their social media. Just do not do this. This is a very bad idea. Um, basically, you have to look at it like you are breaking an addiction and they are crack cocaine and you are removing yourself from the crack cocaine. Um, this is, you know, you're setting boundaries. This is all about setting boundaries. You do not owe them anything. You do not have to have them in your life at all. Um, do not negotiate with these people. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't negotiate with them. When you set these boundaries, you are doing acting in the highest act of self-care and self-love, right? This is this is a he, an act of healing for you to set these boundaries. Um, yeah, you don't negotiate with them. If you need to, if you have to negotiate with them via an attorney, use an attorney. Um, these people are psychological bullies. You are not going to let them bully you. They are, they do not have the right to bully you into any communication with them. No, they don't get to do it. Um, they remember for them, they prefer positive supply and validation. It's delicious food for them, but they will feed off your fear. If you're afraid of them, they love it. I mean, they just, it's delicious. Yummy, yummy, yummy to them. So um, do not offer these people second chances or third chances, not at all. Completely disengage from all communication. Um, if behaviors get violent or scary um, or stockish or stalking, call the authorities, file a restraining order. Um, do not keep this abuse to yourself. Do not keep it a secret. Um, you know, secrets are moldy and dark, but the, but beautiful truth and sunlight is what takes them away. So you don't need to keep a secret. If they have been abusive, be, you, you get to talk about it. Let the truth come out. Um, eventually all, you know, all lies will be exposed to the, to the light. Uh, be 100% consistent. Be very firm. Do not do not give in to their their manipulations. Um, do not drive by their house. Do not stalk them in any way. Do not stalk their affair partners. Do not look at their affair partner's social media. Do not talk to their flying monkeys. Cut off all contact with flying monkeys, family members, friends that are abusers by proxy. Now, some people, you can tell them, hey, I don't want to talk about this person. I know we're mutual friends, but I don't want to talk about them. And if they're people that have healthy boundaries, they will respect that and you will have no communication about that person. How are they going to react to this? Well, um, they're probably going to contact your friends and try to get them to contact you. They may come by your house. They will try to call and text you. 
Um, they cannot handle rejection. No contact to them is like, um, it, it's like a vampire being exposed to the sunlight. They have no inner sense of value, so they need external validation. They're looking to feed this very insatiable hole that needs to be fed. They need an external sense of value to feel okay. They have no way of self-regulating. -regu These people have no way of regulating themselves. Um, they feed their ego with this external sense of value. Uh, it could be the right job, the right partner, the right accolades, the right education. They definitely love to feel superior. They are motivated by power and control. These people are insatiable, hungry beasts. They are going to cyber stalk you. They might, again, they might show up at your house. They are not well. They definitely love to choose empathetic people who are very happy and giving and loving, complimentary. They just love it. They can't see you as a human being. You are a tool, okay? They want to control you. They cannot connect with you on any real human level. They cannot truly bond. They just want you to bring them value. What's in it for them? You are simply a machine. You are a tool. You are a robot. And because they cannot handle rejection, when you go no contact, you're essentially cutting off their supply and you are creating a narcissistic injury. Um, these people, unfortunately, had some sort of trauma as children. They, they are broken. These are broken people. And they get, when you go no contact, that is going to create a narcissistic injury. This is going to create a sense, abandonment is very terrifying to them. And then they are going to get into a narcissistic rage. That rage um, can be very toddler-like. If they're the covert types, it might be a silent rage, but they're going to give you uh, the silent treatment and stonewalling and manipulation. You are basically dealing with a toddler. Look, if you are lucky enough when you go no contact that the narcissist goes away, oh my gosh, just be so grateful. Be so grateful. If they don't contact you, if they don't hoover you, or that you don't know that they're hoovering you, thank God. God, because those ones, it's like, okay, they're gone. You can start to truly heal. The other types that are very insistent and pushy, and they're going to try to contact you on multiple occasions. Um, I have an example of a situation where um, went no contact and that narcissist tried to contact me eight times. I was like, don't do it. And I just completely ignored every single attempt at communication. It was like third party communication. It was like trying to call, trying to text, trying to email. No, they do not get in. You do not let them in. You need to be 100% consistent. And, and I know that this is very, very hard. If you, if you have to co-parent and you still have a child with them, then you're going to have to employ the gray rock method. I'm going to make another video on the gray rock method, but this video is on no contact. You do this so you can start to heal. Once you get away, once you go no contact, you're going to start getting some reality, some clarity, and you're going to start seeing the truth of the kind of relationship you were in. You're going to start seeing the truth of all the behaviors that they, um, operated in that were abusive and psychological, emotional abuse, gaslighting, manipulation, infidelity, cheating, lying, sex addiction, whatever crazy stuff they had going on, you are going to start getting some clarity and you're going to see that you were in an abusive relationship and you deserve better. You do not deserve to be treated like this by anyone. And if you are an empath or codependent, you might have grown up with some trauma yourself and you may have been primed for this narcissistic abuse. If you had a narcissist in your family, somebody mentally ill, a parent or a active addict, you might be used to this. This may actually feel familiar to you when you met this narcissist, right? And I am here to suggest that um, it's very important for you to stop normalizing abuse. It's stop it. Stop normalizing abuse, neglect and mistreatment. You deserve to be treated with love and respect and reciprocity and honest communication and kindness and empathy and authenticity. That is what you deserve and do not settle for anything less in a relationship of any kind. So no contact is the way to go, people. You got to do it. And if you're struggling, um, you know, not knowing, here, here's just some suggestions that I, I just really highly recommend that you do it. And you don't need to explain it to them. I mean, you can just tell them once, hey, I'm 
I do not want any communication with you and then go gung ho and block them on everything. And whatever you do, do not stalk them on social media or any of their girlfriend or boyfriend or flying monkeys. You are not, that's not no contact and that you've got to be able to break this trauma bond. And, and the, the way to start breaking the trauma bond is to go no contact. And eventually what's going to happen for you is you'll go no contact. You'll break the trauma bond. This happened for me. And then you're, you are going to start to heal. And when you start looking, you're never going to like you, even when you think about them, which is going to be rare, right? You're going to go through the period of ruminations and perseverations and all of that. And I made some videos on that and many people have as well, but eventually you're just not going to think about them. It's, they're not, they're going to be a non entity to you. It's you're, you're going to get so much healing and you're going to get away. And then it's going to be like, as if like, they just, they're, they're a non-entity. Like you, when you think of them, I mean, for me now, it's like, when I think of the, the narcissist that I was with, like the primary, um, the long-term relationship, I just have pity and even some compassion. Um, do I ever want to have contact again? Heck no. But I have pity for that person, compassion. I have no anger left. I have no, there's no rage. There's not, there's no sadness. It's more, it's pity. It's like, I just imagine like how horrible it would be to be that kind of person and to live in that kind of headspace and have those kind of, you know, crappy relationships your whole life and to not be able to bond with another human being, which means you don't really get to experience real love. You don't really have real love. And to live in this existence of the human experience with never being able to love another human being and never really experiencing true love, I think that's like the most heartbreaking thing I've ever heard in my whole life. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't see what the point is of, of this existence in life if you, if you can't love. That's very, very sad. So, um, go no contact and you're going to start getting some reality is going to start sinking in and you're going to start getting some perspective and you're going to start healing and all of these emotional flashbacks you're going to learn some ways to manage them and eventually they're going to get less and less and less so i hope you guys are practicing radical self-care thanks so much bye-bye